let's talk about what we can all learn from tennis star Serena Williams. I'm Dr. David Geyer, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine expert. For seven of the first eight years of my career, I was the chief tournament physician for a professional tennis tournament, the Family Circle Cup. It was a women's professional tennis tournament, and I got to see some of the best players in all of tennis. The Williams sisters, Caroline Wozniacki, Maria Sharapova, it was fantastic. A lot of work, but it was really great. One of the years where I was chief tournament physician, the hospital, as part of a sponsorship agreement that they had with the tennis tournament, the hospital had the opportunity to do the ceremonial coin toss before one of the big matches that was going to be televised on ESPN. Turns out that the president of the university couldn't do it, the dean of the medical school couldn't do it, the marketing department needed somebody to do the coin toss. They knew that I was on site as I had to be the entire tournament, so they asked if I could do the coin toss. And I said, sure, this will be great. You know, it's five minutes of my time, I'll go to center court, I'll shake a couple of the players' hands, flip the coin, and then go back to work. And again, this is the featured match on ESPN, the one o'clock match, and there's maybe 10 or 11,000 people in the stadium at center court. Turns out it was a match uh, facing Serena Williams and some young Rus Russian girl. I don't even remember her name. But the players come in, I'm standing at midcourt with the you know, head official uh, that's going to basically officiate the match. Basically what's gonna happen is the players are gonna come in, they're gonna go to either side of the court, they're gonna walk towards the net, then I will shake their hands, flip the coin, and then wh whoever wins the coin toss will pick who gets to serve first. So that's exactly what happened. You know, in front of 10, 11,000 people, the two players walk in, they set their bags down, they go to their respective sides of the, of the court, and then they come to the net where the referee and I are waiting. I look at the, the Russian girl first because she gets there first. She has a huge smile on her face, sticks out her hand, and shakes my hand. Then I look over at Serena. I stick out my hand to, to offer it so that she can shake my hand. She doesn't shake it. Again, I'm embarrassed. It's in front of 10, 11,000 people. But it's not even that she didn't shake my hand. Literally, she didn't even look at me. So I'm stunned. I don't know what to do. The referee makes some sort of signal to me that just go ahead and do the coin toss, which I did. Do the coin toss. They go about their business, have a great match on television in front of 10, 11,000 people in the stadium and who knows how many people watching across the world. Now, I thought about that sort of slight by Serena Williams for a long time. Obviously, as it was happening, I was embarrassed. There were people everywhere watching. I stick out my hand so that we can shake hands. She doesn't shake my hand and she doesn't even look at me. She's staring intensely at that young Russian girl. I didn't matter to her. All that mattered to Serena Williams was destroying her opponent, this young Russian girl. And that's what she did. In probably about 20 minutes, she won six love, six two, or something like that. Absolutely destroyed her. What it turns out, you know, I started to think about this months and years later, I finally got over the embarrassment and the anger, and I started to realize that that's not what Serena Williams was there to do. She, yes, in theory, could have been nice and shook my hand, but I was a distraction to her. The ceremonial coin toss was a distraction. Her only focus was across the court, that young Russian girl. Her only job was to go out and beat her, and she beat her very, very badly. And it got me thinking, how well do I focus in what's most important? And I'd ask you to ask the same thing. How well do you specifically focus on exactly what you need to do, whether it's your sport, whether it's in school, or whether it's in your job? Michael Phelps has a term for this. He always asks himself, what's important now? And to Serena, what was important was winning that match, not making somebody happy in a ceremonial coin toss. Let's see how we can apply what Serena Williams is teaching us to our work. Maybe you have a big presentation due. Maybe you're giving it at a national conference for your industry. Maybe you're just giving it at your departmental meeting, but you want to deliver a terrific presentation. But instead, you're checking email every five minutes or social media. And you know, I'm not just talking about 
little distractions that are keeping you from doing what you're supposed to be doing. It could be worse. You could be accepting tasks and assignments that have no bearing on your big goal, your big project, so to speak. And instead, you're doing work that helps other people. If anything, it brings you further away from making progress on that big goal. You must learn to eliminate distractions, and we must all learn to say no. It may not make us popular saying we're not going to do something, but if you deliver outstanding results and outstanding work, people really aren't going to care that you turn down something that really doesn't matter. We need to deliver excellence by eliminating the trivial. If you're a student, maybe you have a big test coming up, or maybe you just have a lot of homework. You have to eliminate the distractions and focus on what you have to do academically. No texting, no social media, turn off your phone, put it in a different room. And that goes for TV and video games and everything else. You have to focus very, very intently on what you need to do to do the absolute best you can in your school. There's a room for texting and social media. There's a place for that when your most important work is done but not while you're doing it. It's just gonna help you lose focus. You won't do as well on that test or on your homework, and it'll end up taking a whole lot longer. This advice applies to sports and exercise as well. When you're training, focus on the training and eliminate everything else. If it's a team sport, focus on exactly what the coach is saying, not laughing with your friends. If it's exercise, focus on what you need to do right now to get better. Don't just go through the motions and get through it. Focus exactly on what you need to do right then with whatever the drill is, whether it's hill work for running or sprints or those squats that you're doing. Focus on doing it absolutely perfectly and focus on getting better. Don't be thinking about what you're gonna do after practice or after training. Don't think about what you're gonna do on vacation at the end of the season. Focus on doing your absolute best right then and there, you can worry about everything else after it's over. And that's what we can all learn from Serena Williams. If we want to be champions in sports, business, and life, 